Ever catch yourself overthinking the simple act of choosing a sandwich? It's as if the fate of the world hangs in the balance between turkey and ham, whole wheat or white. Welcome to the realm of overthinking, where the mundane becomes monumental and every micro-decision is a maze of possibilities. Overthinking isn't a switch that you flip on and off, it's more like a spectrum. On one end we have the occasional overthinkers. These are the folks who might spend an extra few minutes deciding between two nearly identical shades of blue for a new t-shirt. They may ponder a bit longer over a menu at a restaurant, debating the pros and cons of the chicken versus the fish but they manage to make a decision without too much distress. Then, there are those who hover in the middle of the spectrum. They don't just overthink the small stuff, they overthink everything. Should they take the freeway or the scenic route? Should they text their friend first or wait for them to make the first move? They can turn any simple choice into a complex algorithm of what-ifs and maybes. And on the far end we find the chronic overthinkers. They're the ones who could spend an entire evening debating whether to start watching a new Netflix series. They might even create a pros and cons list, research reviews and then, after hours of deliberation decide to re-watch their favorite show instead. Because, you know, it's a safe choice. Regardless of the level of overthinking you or someone close to you may experience, join us on this journey. Also give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to discover more ways to improve your life and the lives of those around you. But here's the thing. Overthinking, while often frustrating, can also be hilariously absurd. So why not embrace the humor in it? After all, life is too short to spend it lost in thought about which sandwich to choose or what show to watch next. So whether you're an occasional ponderer, a middle-of-the-spectrum analyzer, or a chronic overthinker, remember this. Overthinking might make the simple things in life more complicated, but it also makes them a lot more entertaining. Ever been paralyzed by choices at the grocery store? Welcome to the uncharted territories of the overthinker's mind, where even the simplest decisions can feel like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. It's a place where choosing between two identical shirts can spiral into a full-blown existential crisis. We call this phenomenon analysis paralysis. Sounds intense, doesn't it? But take heart. We're all in this together, and the best part is, it's more common than you might think. Imagine you're at the grocery store standing in the cereal aisle confronted by a vast sea of colorful boxes. Cornflakes or granola, chocolate or fruit, low sugar or high fiber, the choices are endless, and suddenly you're stuck in a whirlwind of thoughts. Should you opt for the cereal that promises lower calories, or perhaps the one that's rich in fiber would be a healthier choice? And just when you thought you had made up your mind, you spot another brand offering a free toy inside. Oh, the perils of decision-making. And let's not forget the classic conundrum of picking out an outfit. Two identical shirts, one blue, one black. The blue one matches your eyes, but the black one goes with everything. You've tried them on at least half a dozen times, yet you're still no closer to a decision. All the while, the clock is ticking and you're running late. You see, overthinking has a sneaky way of turning even the most mundane tasks into Herculean challenges. But here's a secret. It's okay to laugh at it. Yes, you heard me right. Humor is our secret weapon against the onslaught of overthinking. As Eleanor Roosevelt once wisely said, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. So go ahead, make that decision and remember, the world won't end if you choose the wrong cereal or shirt. So, next time you find yourself in the throes of analysis paralysis, remember to take a step back, breathe, and chuckle at the absurdity of it all. Midnight thoughts hitting you like a freight train? Well, you're not alone. It's quite a common phenomenon, this overthinking at night. I mean, who hasn't been a member of the 2 a.m. overthinking club? In the quiet of the night, when the world is asleep, our minds decide it's the perfect time for a mental marathon. You know the drill. You're all tucked in, ready for a good night's sleep, and boom. Your mind starts playing what-if scenarios faster than a movie marathon. What if I had taken that other job offer? What if I had chosen the avocado toast at breakfast instead of the porridge? And then there's the classic replay of every mildly awkward interaction you've had in the last decade. Did I say you too, when the movie usher said, enjoy the movie back in 2012? It's like your brain is a theater, and you're the unwilling audience to a never-ending reel of awkward moments the greatest hits. And let's not forget the imaginary debates where you come up with perfect comebacks. Five hours too late. But here's the funny part. When dawn breaks and you're looking at these thoughts in the light of day, they often seem amusing, right? You find yourself chuckling at the absurdity of it all. 
And that's the beauty of overthinking my friends. It's a wild ride sure but it's also a testament to our imagination, our creativity, it's proof that we can spin stories out of thin air, create entire universes in our minds. So, the next time you find yourself lying awake at night, wrestling with thoughts that seem to have a life of their own, remember to chuckle a little. Remember that it's just your mind flexing its creative muscles, even if the timing could be better. Welcome to the exclusive club of overthinkers. Remember the words of Leo Tolstoy, the greatest joy that can come out of your life is the joy of giving. And sometimes that giving can be as simple as giving yourself a break, giving yourself permission to laugh at the absurdity of it all. Because in the grand scheme of things, isn't life just one big hilarious overthinking marathon? Humor is the antidote to overthinking. Laughter lightens the load. Welcome to our fourth scene, where we delve into the power of humor, a potent elixir for the overthinking mind. Ever noticed how a good laugh can melt away the most complex of thoughts? That's humor, our personal superhero swooping in to save the day. Consider this, you're about to send an email and you've read it for the 20th time. You're worried about every comma, every word choice. Suddenly a colleague cracks a joke. You laugh and just like that your overthinking bubble bursts. The email doesn't seem so daunting anymore does it? A chuckle here, a giggle there and the mountain of overthinking becomes a molehill. And it's not just about laughter. Humor also helps us gain perspective. Remember the time when you spent an hour deciding between two practically identical pairs of socks? Now doesn't that seem a bit funny in hindsight? Humor allows us to step back, see the bigger picture and realize, hey, maybe I was overthinking just a tad bit. To quote the legendary comedian George Carlin, some people see the glass half full, others see it half empty. I see a glass that's twice as big as it needs to be. It's all about perspective, isn't it? Now we're not saying that humor is a magic wand that will make overthinking disappear, but it's a brilliant sidekick, ready to swoop in when the thoughts get too heavy. It's like a gentle nudge, reminding us not to take ourselves too seriously. So next time you find yourself stuck in the labyrinth of overthinking, remember to invite humor to the party. Let laughter echo through the corridors of your mind, lighting up the dark corners and softening the sharp edges. And always remember, as you navigate the winding paths of your thoughts, to carry a healthy dose of humor in your back pocket. Because in the words of Charlie Chaplin, a day without laughter is a day wasted. So fellow overthinkers, have we given you enough to overthink about? Let's do a quick rewind and revisit the highlights of our discussion. We started with the overthinking spectrum, painting a vivid picture of how overthinking isn't a binary switch but a colorful spectrum. We've all found ourselves in the spectrum at some point. From the trivial serial choice debate to predicting the outcome of a text message. Remember, as Mark Twain wisely put it, I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Then we danced with the overthinker's dilemma, analysis paralysis. That moment when we're paralyzed by the plethora of choices at the grocery store. But as Eleanor Roosevelt reminded us, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. So, grab that cereal box, send that text, make that choice. We also took a journey into the realm of the midnight overthink, those heavy thoughts that hit you like a freight train in the stillness of the night. It's during these times we should embrace the wisdom of Leo Tolstoy. The greatest joy that can come out of your life is the joy of giving. So give yourself the gift of rest. Tomorrow is another day. Finally we discovered the most potent antidote, humor. Laughter truly is the best medicine, lightening the load of overthinking. As Charlie Chaplin said, a day without laughter is a day wasted. So, let's not waste any more days, let's laugh at the absurdity of our overthinking and enjoy the ride. Hopefully we've given you a new perspective on overthinking, and maybe even a few chuckles along the way. Embrace your overthinking tendencies, use humor as your shield, and remember it's all part of the human experience. Join us in the next video where we explore more quirks of the mind and find joy in the unexpected. Until then, may your thoughts be light and your laughter plenty.